Yes, and your head's cut off. <laughs> Best eat some urgent chocolate bar, bar ever. Yes, but you, you have to tell them where the bottom of it is. So. Well, and it's going to change now when you sit down. <laughs> and now it's like right now at the you bottom are ahead. Screen. Okay. <laughs> Do your own try to sit down, and we'll give her a copy. It's fun, although I have others. It was just more of a... <laughs> Here, let's, let's do this. We'll just widen the frame a little bit. Without getting the cat in there. Now, how do we look? Yeah, that's much better. It's all in? That's pretty creepy, but yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, welcome to First Geek Congregation. If you hadn't guessed, we are playing with our technology to make this happen and getting the webcam set up for the first time, which is why we're 30 minutes late starting this. Um, if you're wondering, if you're seeing this for the first time and wondering what these fools are doing on YouTube with uh, this whole First Geek Congregation thing, uh, think about it as the concept of God and religion for geeks. Um, we think different. We act a little differently than everybody else in society. We wear T-shirts like this. Um, we, we don't fit in with a lot of religion. Standard churches, well, a lot of them look down upon geeky people because of our obsession with things like Star Trek or the latest anime or video games or things like this. They don't ha understand and they don't connect with us well. In this room, on the other hand, we connect with each other fairly well because we're all geeks one way or another. Additionally, we tend to be a little more open-minded. Um, we tend to have... Uh, a different sort of viewpoint. Just because we believe in a thing doesn't mean that everybody else is wrong, too. Um, we watch Star Trek, the other guy over there watches Star Wars. It doesn't mean that we start a fight over it. Well, most of the time we don't start a fight over it. Um, and it's reflected here. We also have a very simple set of principles. Love, peace, and respect. Anybody who attends here, we tend to present ourselves with love, peace, and respect to each other. And we hope to take that out into the world with us. We also, from time to time, have guest speakers and things like that. We won't be doing that today. Um, and some of the topics get a little bit different than you normally see in most churches. So, without much further time wasting on my part, today's is going to be something really weird. We're going to start this one out pretty, pretty, or this whole uh, YouTube live events out pretty geeky. We're going to do the simulation hypothesis. Now, if you've never heard of it before, the simulation hypothesis breaks down the concept that what we're experiencing actually isn't real, per se. The universe is a construct. The universe is actually a construct within a computer of some sort, or actually some of the arguments are within brains or within um, uh, any other computing device. <clears throat> there, and what kind of spawned this was a friend of mine on Facebook posted eight, um, I'll try to remember them. Eight great philosophical questions that we will never solve. Actually, the simulation hypothesis is one of them that is possible we could solve. And surprisingly, if we solve that one, we might actually solve a couple others on the list. If you're curious what this list was, it was actually mostly boring. Um, for instance, well, does God exist? That's probably one of the less boring ones. Um, is there life after death? Well, we can never really answer that one. Can you really experience anything objectively? Well, we answer, no, the answer is no. There's nothing, it, each person brings their own experience to any experience. Uh, what is the best moral system? These are things that, yeah, okay, part of them are unanswerable, part of them are just, well, kind of gotcha questions as click, clickbait. But the one that got me, that, that spawned this, was, oh, where did it go? Ah, is our universe real? Now, quick, quick questions for everybody in the room, all huge numbers of us in the room. Uh, <laughs> how many have heard of it? Uh, had you heard of this before? The high the, 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 No, I have not heard of the hypothesis <laughs> before, at least by that name. <laughs> yeah, get used to that. I I've heard of the concept. Gotcha. Well, in the simulation hypothesis, there are actually a couple of different names. And the simulation hypothesis is actually a very specific one. 
And it basically boils down to this. Eventually, you get to the point, in, you get to the point in any given time, or any given universe, where we finally have the amount of, compute, uh, of computing power that we start running simulations of our ancestors. This is a sim simulation hypothesis is very specific because it's the idea that somebody is trying to find out about where we came from by running a simulation of the universe that simulates us with inside of it so that um, you can come back with the answers. How did we get here where we are now? Unfortunately, and the guy that, that uh, did this in particular, the concept's been around for a very long time. And, you know, everybody, is everybody, has everybody heard of things like uh, the brain in the jar argument, things like that? Or there's there's solipsism, which or solipsism, which you know is like the theory that you can only know that one person exists because you can think, but you can't verify that other people are thinking. Exactly. There's a and there's a bunch of those. There's a, is historically throughout philosophy, the question of our experience versus reality has always always been questioned with with good reason. Descartes. Yeah. And you can see it in modern stuff like the Matrix and things too. It's yeah, the Matrix is the, is and oddly enough, there's a second movie that came out at the same time, uh, the Thirteenth Floor, uh, that did not get nearly as as much exposure. The Thirteenth Floor is possibly a little more interesting with it because in the Matrix you've got. I so refuse to use that. Pretty simple. You've got the real world, and then you got the matrix simulation. That was it. And the 13th floor you end up with the characters are messing around in here. This guy is messing, messing around into the simulated reality, and eventually you start to notice that there's another reality above it. The idea being it can be nested as deep as it wants to, or as deep as it as realities have caused it to. <clears throat> now the first thing, the first kind of fun thing about this is we already do simulation. Because one of the debates is, it basically boils down to this, and I'm actually going to pull this up. Um, Nick Bostrom, by the way, is the guy that, that come up with very specifically the simulation hypothesis. And uh, um, it boils down to the following. Um, first, there's there's basically three scenarios. Whether or not we exist in within a simulation boils down to three scenarios. One, um, first, either humans are likely to go extinct before advancing to the point that we can run simulations like this. Two, um, is everybody familiar with the term post-human? Next step. Kind of the next step, be it... Um, through a, you know, uh, genetic manipulation or uh, adding machines, parts to us, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there are a number of scenarios. If Neanderthal was step one, then maybe step two. Yeah. Basically, uh, that uh, a, a post-human civilization isn't likely to run many uh, uh, simulations of its own evolutionary history. And the third is that either if the, one of the first two isn't true, then we are in a simulation. Well, the first one is if it gets to the point that they're running simulations. We actually already are at that point to a certain degree. We routinely have started running simulations, and they get more and more comp complex, of the universe. For instance, Big Bang Theory, a lot of the stuff that goes into that, if we're trying to prove it, ends up being some really cool simulation stuff. Computers that are running, you know, 600 million particles through a cycle to see whether or not what comes out is kind of like what we have in the real world, or what we consider the real world. So we're already kind of doing that. So there are ones actually looks like we may get to that point. Okay, I'm a little simple. So I would even say that 
scientific toy with the sun and then the planets going around it in a gear fashion would still be a simulated universe. It is. We're trying to understand something that we can't actually see. Yeah. It, it actually is. Because um, all it requires is a computing device of some sort, right? Well, a computing device can be anything that you can run. You can run logic on it. You can run logic with gears. Believe it or not, one of one of, one of the uh, arguments within what it could be running on is is the idea of uh, the brain in the jar argument that literally it doesn't have any external stimuli and it is created and has run the universe within its own cell structure, which uh, the human brain is something to the effect of I think ten to the twenty seventh power connections is is a really 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 big computer compared to what we could work with. Runs slow, but. Considering my nightmares, yes, you do not need simulation to make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, I was getting back to question. So the second one is number two. Would we do something like that? Would we actually run simulations? Well, we're already doing it to a certain degree. In fact, actually, we don't really. And I'm not knocking anybody. We don't really keep a moral bounds on science. In fact, actually, it's a, in a way, it's a good thing that we don't. <laughs> so it's not like there's an argument against why we would. So it just basically boils down to, if we get to that point, we probably will. And we're right at the cusp of that point already. Ah, yes. The yes. Machine. Yes. And what he what he just slid me is uh, it is a three D computing get grid essentially. What is the name of it? The machine. The machine. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a more pattern. technical name, but it's it's essentially a whole lot of parallel processors. Yeah. Six hundred and fifty terabytes per second computational power. <laughs> This. That. <laughs> well, that is as low tech as we can get <laughs> for screen no. sharing. <laughs> it wasn't a stick figures or paper. <laughs> get a flip book going on with stick figures. Which, and, and, and oddly enough, if you start looking at the data on that, you know, when they expect to start shipping, it becomes a little less impressive mm -hmm. because it's, it's really just kind of following the concept of. To a degree, following the concept of Moore's law. Moore's law is basically that every 18 months, the amount of transistors in a computer on a chip mm -hmm. or computing device, depending on who you talk to, uh, doubles. And as you can see, it wasn't necessarily better or an improvement upon the existing technology, it was just more of it. Yeah, it was just it a big box. It was a big box of yeah. regular CPUs. So theoretically, you know, we're starting to see horsepower starting to run that direction. Um, I'm gonna pull this up. And this is pretty pretty groovy because somebody actually somebody broke down um, how much power it actually requires to do our universe. If you were going to simulate this universe, how much would it take? And it's kind of neat. If you're my type of geek. Fun fact: we have one viewer. Ooh, <laughs> hi. How you doing out there? Yeah. Look. Now nah, you don't get to see who they are unless they uh, unless they uh, unless they let you. Yeah. If they if they join the hangout because they can watch live without actually getting involved, or they join the hangout. If they join the hangout portion of it, or uh, join the chat. Your name? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you get an idea. Mm -hmm. And it could be who knows. But it was hi again. Thanks for joining us. Which would be even funnier when these are just sitting on YouTube having been recorded. And now I'm talking to somebody who's watching it and they're not really live anymore. Um, anyways. That's going to be the weird part. <laughs> Smart aleck wife. Anyways. Um, so the idea being. It requires a certain amount of computing power to do this. So, 
Mm-hmm. I'm running that backwards. Yeah. Is it the answer is 42? <laughs> that would be funny. Due to glare, we have difficulty seeing. You could move your writing down maybe four inches. These fluorescent lights are wonderful. Wonderful, that's a word. Okay, let's try something else. There we go. Is that color more readable? That color is more readable. Oh, okay. It's more better. More better. Because if I brought the black one, it would have been really readable, but I didn't. idea being that you can only have, if you're going to do this, you have to have a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of speed that it can run at, etc., etc. This is the theoretical limits of uh, computing power of the various systems that we can think of and contemplate at the moment. For instance, the human brain can do about, now, keep in mind, the human brain is focused on a whole lot of things at once, but can do about 10 to the 11th power operations per second. Pretty impressive. Of course, unfortunately, in day-to-day -day tasks, the amount of computing power, our hearing, our eyes, the amount to just stand here is amazing. So while we can do this much on a day-to-day -day basis, actually we think fairly slow. Quantum computing gets us to the point that you're doing like 10 to the 50th power of, of operations per second. So, Quantum computing is kind of a, if anybody's ever read anything on it, it's a strange and bizarre field on its own. And we'll not dive into that here. <laughs> and the last one, I can't write superscript very well apparently, is if you had a, basically a parallel computing system set up that was about the size of Jupiter. You'd end up with something that does about 10 to the 40 second power worth of operations per second. But why this is relevant? If a simulation runs too slow, everybody would get the people running the simulation would become bored with it or would fail to execute on it. So we have to have high enough speed before it becomes an issue, right? By the way, just so you know, that's okay? Not an emergency. Okay. It's a concern we can really. Um, so we have Jupiter, a tadpole, and an eyeball. Yeah, it was supposed to be a brain. It was supposed to be a brain. I need to work on my, my, my quick drawing skills on the whiteboard someday. He can draw portraits on napkins. So work with him. It, it, it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I know whiteboards are difficult. Well, you know, oddly enough, part of it is, is, believe it or not, part of it is actually kind of being the stress thing. Oh my God, people are watching me draw. This is a problem. <laughs> people aren't supposed to watch me draw. Um, Didn't want to say anything, but it's always funny. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what? I heard a baby. Oh, I think yeah, I saw somebody walk past the field in the front. Okay, so we, we we already have the concepts, the the amount of the amount of uh, computing power. We can see that someday we probably will have this amount of computing power. So the likelihood that we will do it gets relatively high. Now the guy that wrote the simulation hypothesis puts the likelihood in his numbers puts the likelihood at about ten percent that we're sitting in the simulation. He also says, by the way, that's just my personal opinion. There's no science to back that up. That was just his his belief. And his belief also required one other thing. 
when we run simulations right now, we're running things like the Big Bang because we're curious about cosmology. Or later on, we also run simulations because you can call Half-Life 2 a simulation. You can call Call of Duty a simulation. All of these systems can be called simulations because that's what they do. The Sims. The Sims. <laughs> that's a little disturbing, actually. I'm, actually, I'm slightly more disturbed by the idea that the Sims, uh, thinking of the Sims in that respect, than Call of Duty. That, that at least removed enough from realities. Um, and all of the study of anthropology would be considered a simulation. They have a bone, and they're trying to figure out what the party was. I'm sure I might agree with that. Define simulation. Again, uh, simulations only occur on a computer device. Fair enough, fair enough. You're going to take the brain You put direction. four sciences together in a room. Tell me it is not a computing device. <laughs> fair enough. We've all seen dioramas, or even if it's not movement, but of something that is not real now, but was supposedly real then. Right. It's an interesting point. They've taken and made... So we, could, so we could theoretically be just sitting here sitting in somebody's head as they are contemplating, well, how did the Native Americans end up ruling the U.S. in 2260? I'm theoretically, yeah. you know. Because you, you end up with with the caveman statu wax, wax statues of a Neanderthal going off of bone structure is scientifically correct and figure out what we ate going through Cooper Light, don't tell me that isn't simulation. Well, if you're using the human brain as, as a computing device at that point, then yeah. yeah. But what apps does it run? You don't want to know what oh, apps. Oh, I got all kinds of applications. <laughs> I do not think I do not. <laughs> There's an interesting question. What apps does the human brain run? Well, <laughs> the calculator. Mm -hmm. Of course, poorly. I more along the lines of a wax Neanderthal. To <laughs> what? I was thinking more along the lines of a wax Neanderthal. What kind of apps does that run? Anyways, so we're to that point. Now the question becomes, and this is where it all comes around, because I could go, I could actually go further with a whole lot of possible scenarios and uh, the math behind it and the ideas behind it and etc etc you can only go so far it just becomes boring eventually to everybody but myself to me it's just fascinating um, so it becomes what effect does this have on religion in fact on that original eight questions that was that that was on that list for instance well here's the first one if we're a simulation It automatically means we have a creator. That, that's kind of fascinating right there. It would answer the, because the next question on the list was, is there a God? Well, there's at least a creator if there's a signal, if it was a simulation, or creators. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm looking at the picture box. Continue, please. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Now, the question, I guess, becomes, in my head, because I, I don't have answers to this, if it's a simulation universe, if, for instance, God hit the button and said, let there be light, and sort of the... There was no button. It came from his fingertip. But there was the Windows the starting logo sound. Because it's a Mac, anyways, dude. It doesn't crash. I was um, going to say it's a Mac. <laughs> I was going to argue for the fact that it's as buggy as it is. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people would argue that there's some bugs in the universe, usually at the human level. <laughs> we find bug. Maybe we're all supposed to see this crazy. It's an undocumented feature. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, 
So I put the question to you guys. Put the question to you guys. If it's, let's say, we go on again with the idea, if it is a simulation, it's great for God. Is there, any, in the, is there any evidence of such a thing in the Bible? Yes. Does anybody else want to answer? Okay. I want to hear yours. Um, I'm really bad at chapter and verse, but when the tabernacle is being described before it is built, when Moses is on the mountain, it is given the illusion that he is looking at the tabernacle in heaven so that he knows what is supposed to be right besides getting the perfect directions. So therefore creating a tabernacle, because yeah, tents are so useful, um, creating a tabernacle on earth would be a complete perfect replica of what was in heaven. I do not read that good of Hebrew, but it is the illusion that he is seeing something that he is supposed to recreate. That makes perfect sense. I can't spot that. Wow. Anyway, I can't see that. Can you at all? Okay. Can you see it? I'm going to say if you have to look that closely, probably not. Tabernacle image in bacon. <laughs> bacon. bacon. <laughs> the tabernacle does not have a, a H in it. Okay, somebody spell tabernacle for me. T A B E R N A C L E. T A B E R N A C L E. C L E. This looks like Ow, ow, ow. Tabernacle. It's Greek. It's literal. Okay. All right. That's actually an interesting one. I didn't even consider that. Two ounces? <laughs> no, he has C. Terrible penmanship. Oh, oh. Um, just because I can draw doesn't mean I can write. Oh, my gosh. No. All my birthday cards are like, oh, it must be from my husband. The day that I'm waiting for, I'll be honest, the day that I'm waiting for is when we're in the next room and they have the projector up. Because I'm going to put it into all of my tongues. He will have PowerPoint. Yes, Whoa. yes. And I've got my iPad right here. Just hook it to the projector. Page, page, page. And on top of that, you know, if I need to write something onto the thing, I type it. I mean, it's going to look a lot nicer. People couldn't be read what I'm saying. So what he really means to say is give donations of time to the center of Wichita so that they can get the next room complete. Fair enough. <laughs> but, wait a minute. Hang on a second. It, for, those who, for those who are playing along at home, um, <laughs> you can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash congregation. The reason why I mention this is because you can always contact us there, even during the Hangouts and things like that. Um, Apparently, even after having changed the drivers and everything else, I'm writing all the text backwards. Really? Yes, because it shows up prop proper direction on your screen, doesn't it? Yeah, it's showing proper direction on our screen. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to have to experiment with this when I get home. Because this is, this is not right. Thank you, Harvey. Awesome. <laughs> okay, what was your thought? You, you you said you were wanting to hear hers first. What was yours? Well, I was thinking along the lines of, you know, the all the things that were seen like prophetic visions beforehand because the future is already known. And, I mean, it's been laid out <coughs> in revelations and everything. And, of course, that Jesus was fulfilling the things that were said about him before before, you know, they happen. <laughs> That's an interesting point. That's an interesting point. Um, yours is more direct, though, because yours is like, this is this is an exact simulation, whereas, you know, the future could be loosely known, you know. Right, and, and to defend it, I've heard arguments why the person that we know as Jesus cannot be the Messiah, because that's the kind of people I hang out with, um, based off of some of the wording from Isaiah. That being said, um, some interpretations of words and stuff like that, because the Hebrew versus Greek and versus stupid white people and all this other stuff, you end up with 
did it mean virgin or did it mean a young woman? Did it, okay, so who was born at roughly this time? So were a lot of other boys, etc., etc., etc. So persons who choose not to recognize um, Jesus as the Messiah can come up with all these arguments that the visions weren't correct. They were just some words that Isaiah sounded pretty when he wrote them. Um, being what is accurate versus not. And even from the flip side, persons who think that the New Testament is the only answer can't see anything in the Old Testament about the prophecy because, well, that would just be wrong. How could, how could, how could the Christ child have brothers and sisters when she was supposed to be a virgin? Yeah, not perpetual. But it becomes a thing, and I've, I've met people from both sides of this, and I just, I drink my coffee and listen, and then I go home and hug my husband. It, it's a very awkward to be so extreme one way or the other. <clears throat> but then, um, even example number F, um, in the very beginning, when he creates human in our image, it is plural, that God is being recognized as a multi-unit. Um, our image. I always presumed until I was like 30 that that was sentient, ate food, person, a soul. Other people have pointed out, well, of course God has two legs, two hands, but but why would he need them? <laughs> um, so how do you interpret that verse? Image of what? Because I don't look like my husband, but we're both considered humankind. Um, so what is image? And, and image could also be just as loose as, as the idea of just sentient. That it's a thinking being. It isn't necessarily... It is abstract and wide enough for interpretation that it can be anything from the very specific to the very wide. And then even in Genesis 2, when they talk about the creation again... Um, Man was separate than beast. And the camera can see my hand gestures. Um, but man is separate from beast, giving man being sentient. Do not move the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, man being separate than beast, being that he was the shepherd of them. He, he went through and named them not the Lord. It was There was a separation there. But what other creatures are there that walk upon their bipeds in an upright manner? That makes us different, just that alone, let alone the fact that we can make decisions. So, um, and then again, if you've ever dealt with any dog or a cat, training them, they can make decisions. They're just less sentient, as far as I'm concerned. So how do you differentiate... Less, less sentient or less intelligent? Less sentient. Okay. Because the dog, who knows if dogs can read? Maybe they just don't care. <laughs> the dog I thought that was more of a cat problem, but all right. Well, and, and, and we have a dog, so I'm like, he knows that when I say sit down, he sits down. But I can say sit and get the same reaction. It's not that he's even cottoning on specifically to the phrase. He understands these syllables together make this action. And then he gets a cookie. He also knows that he can sit down and not get a cookie. He makes a decision to sit down. Um, it's very simple, but nonetheless, he's still making a choice. He has a water bowl available to him all the time. He chooses to walk over and get a drink as opposed to die on the couch. <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's a decision. So how do you compare intelligence versus sentience when you're making a decision? You're making a cognitive choice to do action A or B. Interesting. By the way, in the middle of that, you actually kind of vaguely started to brush on something that's kind of fun. Because I love free will argument. Because I have free will, I'm wel I'm welcome to start these arguments. Um, but you don't have free will. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I, I have a wife. Um, oh, oh no. Pookie <laughs> Louise. <laughs> <laughs> so one of, the, one of the simulation argument problems that comes up is free will versus mathematical formula. Are we just uh, on rails? Are, is life a roller coaster, or is it uh, a, a free-ranging uh, event where we get to make all the choices we want? I will counter you with 
subset A, free will versus intelligent design. Because it's not necessarily mathematical with formula. If a simulation basically boils down to that, if there's, if there's, isn't isn't math just a way to understand what's here though? Well, and I say the word mathematical formula, or use the phrase mathematical formula. It's not a word. Um, you could actually have replaced this with a number of things, keeping in mind that we're working within the simulation frame set. I could have said programming. All of these are nothing more than, as you just pointed out, a, a way of describing things rather than a, um, a thing. But it boils down to, are we pre-written from the very start with a set of math or programming or et cetera that describes what our behavior is going to be from beginning to end? Because and it's fun because it brings back around your guys' visions and prophecies portion of it. Because if you always know that this point, this point, and this point, things are going to happen, well, it's pretty easy to write prophecies that describe that clear back here. <coughs> I can't say whether that's right or wrong. But, but then getting more specific, because a lot of the prophecies and visions are... It's, it's vague, but it really is. It would, it would not make any sense. Um, even at the time when the, they were written, they're like, yeah, I had a dream, I have no idea what this means. Um, yeah, yeah, the revelations according to John. Yeah, he said, like, dude, I just drink too much. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the free will versus programming, I'm, I, I guess I think more specific because any one decision can change the outcome. In fact, the middle so, minute you have any decisions, the outcome can change. So even just basic flowchart, so back to the example with, in Genesis, when Adam is naming the creatures, what if he would have said, no, I'm out, and just walked off? I do not, my husband and I love to argue this, I do not believe in free will. I would not call it programming, I would call it intelligent design, but whatever. Um, but I do not. Because I feel that the God that I choose to worship knows the end of the book. He just chooses to not let me know. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but, going, but going back to the visions, there's the glimpses in, in prophecy where um, there's allowance for, like, no, because you need to know that you need to be here in 20 years, so I need to leave you a note because you'll forget or you'll get off so far off track that you won't be able to remember. Um, which, to a point, that nobody knows the tribal identity in Judaism anymore because they forgot. Bob didn't write it down because it was no longer safe, and they forgot. So nobody knows. Um, but even, like, with Adam choosing to name these creatures the names in which he did, that formed our language choices today. So if he would have chose any other words, or just opted out and be like, nope, I got, yeah, I'm going to go on a walk. I'm going to make a raft and go down the river. Why would I stay here? Just, you know, I, I, I do not recognize the concept of free will. There's not complete puppet on strings by any means, not that bad, but to a point, if God already knows the end of the book, then there would be he can't allow Marker. us to do something to screw it up. Yeah, there, there'd be, you get to points where there's yes or no questions. And if you make the wrong choice, your program's deleted. I don't know. It, it's because so many of the little things, literally, minutia that, that do not that have to be aligned. Sound very matrixy. <laughs> your program goes awry, you're deleted. Yes. <laughs> and then we're going to reboot it back to copy. <laughs> Well, because, I mean, just little things. What if Joseph and Mary had never met? They lived in the same area, but are you telling me she was the only young hottie? I'm just saying. Well, this 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 brings about, you know, what you're talking about there is you can have free will and still have specific, semi-specific outcomes. And the real way I mean is that you have key, key points that you have, in the case of this, divine intervention. 
Joseph and Mary have to be in that place at that time. So you set the events in motion at the very last minute to occur. You don't have to even do it somewhere clear up here umpteen generations ago. But how but yet you do some of it just just think okay, don't think New Testament, think Old Testament. When it starts to talk about who made David and the, the Messiah act has to be the son of David's line. Those motions were set in motion from the beginning of time. <clears throat> because it had to be, if this person just was shooting blanks and so he didn't have children with his wife, it would screw up the entire lineage. Sure. So, I I just, I don't think know. there's the cutoff points. And what if Mary's father would have been like, no, dude, Joe works with rocks, I can't do this. Fair enough. I'm, I can I can counter that with you can. <laughs> this is the fun part. This is the fun part because you can sit here and go back and forth all day on this, and we will. Um, I get chocolate and coffee about this. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Well, if you believe that, you 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 have to believe that you know God wouldn't let so and so shoot blanks. He would fill him. With the blue power. Oh, jeez. Don't with a what? Don't. No. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you take away the fruit, of course, everybody, everything does happen for a reason. For there, there's the people who. Well, so we're just that. That would just be arguing in, in sets of events and in absolutes, and that cuts off any you know divine power intervention. Because because who, who says he can't just come in and just. Do it right there, you know. Um, I guess what I'm saying. I still go with paper dolls on some occasions. I, I know, not like I said, not complete puppets. They're they're loose strings, mm -hmm. but still much more. Oh, I believe we're total puppets. I'm just being right. No, an antagonist. It's fine. Um, but but the concept of everything does happen for a reason. I don't think that anything would have been set up. Um, Half fast. Yeah. Sorry. Even looks like, because I'm like, everybody Oops. says, well, I didn't intend on having that kid. And I'm like, well, and I mean, even if we're talking about an unfortunate woman with 17 kids and a drug habit, maybe that's one of those kids is going to grow up to be president. Who knows? Yeah. <coughs> so there ends up being, um, there, there's a joke about one of my friends that really did not want to have another kid, and they did everything physically possible, and she still got pregnant. And it's like, this is a guy baby. Because like she was not was medically able to bear children, yeah. and so they didn't do everything physically possible. Well, they were a married couple, and they, they are to still maintain their marriage. Well, right. That means they didn't do everything, but yeah, one. but she like wasn't supposed to have but one. But she didn't have like the parts to have kids. I like so it was oh. really was a god baby, um, and a very adorable god baby she is. Um, but who? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so there's um, everything you could see, and, and it does sound a little bit Pollyanna, cause, and I don't normally feel that way, but there is the good thing that you don't see. Um, even, even in my life, I was whining and crying about boys being dumb and everything else like that, and I was like, okay, I'm 30, I'm just going to rot, I'm never going to get married, blah, blah, blah. and it wasn't until after then that I met Pookie. And I couldn't have asked for a better pick. So yeah, I had to wait. And I was old, and he was old, and he had to go through a first wife to get him trained. And you know, we—that's the circumstances you have to go through. And now we—he knows what not to do, and I know how to exist as a substantial person without having to answer to somebody. And you know, it's those things that make it work out right. Um, and even my parents—they were ancient when I was born. And but you know. My brother has adorable children, and I feel that I have better society in some manner. So, you know, just when you make choices like that, how do you know what led this, to your choice, choices? Yeah. this choice is better than that choice? Um, and, and of course, you can always get... History of the world plus. Right. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, there's little weird things like being able to do the double charities are always nice. You buy something from the thrift store and then give it to somebody. 
that's too fair. And it didn't cost you anything that you wouldn't spend anyway, you know. Especially you know little things like people can't eat money. Um, so, but yeah, they get into this whole thing. Of, it's not delicious. <laughs> there's no nutritional reduction whatsoever. Yeah. Um, not delicious at all. <laughs> You're cheating because the mic can't hear you. <laughs> Actually, I think the mic can hear him. Oh, it sure can. Okay. okay. I was going to say, because it's, it, it's supposed to get off of both sides. It's unidirectional. Yeah. But he's also talking to me. Omnidirectional. Sir. I'm an idiot. No. <laughs> By the way, coming back to your thing. In a non-free will universe, you end up with a right on rails. In a complete free will universe, then you can't guarantee that certain events are going to occur. The free world universe with divine intervention is actually a little closer to what you're describing, what I kind of go with, which is that you can make decisions to a certain degree. Or you can make large decisions, but these events will always occur. They have to occur. They have to occur in that. And if the things have to be nudged back around, that's why it's called divine intervention. So nudged, that's. Shoved. Uh, nudged, shoved, yes. Round. I mean, you know, there's, there's quite a few, quite a few options in that. I wonder if that explains the certain anomalies of death. Not to be too creepy. Why did Bob have to die? But then it caused X, Y, Z to happen. Well, that's always a, it's always a religious debate. If you're on 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 rails, if you're on rails, then that guy died because this has to happen for that guy. For that guy to be here at this time, for that right. One. Same goes for uh, free will with divine intervention universe. So. Yeah, one, one of my friends, he was named after the NICU nurse that saved his life. He would have had that name if it wasn't for that nurse because his mother had problems burying him. I mean, just weird stuff. Also, on a complete rail system, all crime and, and horrible things also be predetermined and specifically sanctioned. By the higher power. In, in fact, yes, absolutely. E evil has to occur because that's what God said, or higher power said, or creator said. Good has to occur because that's what was said. You start the ride, and when you get to the other but, end, the experience is based off the sum of it. But even with that, for as horrible as crime may be, um, and this is so totally ripped off from Mr. Rogers, look for the helpers. You couldn't have a hero without something bad happening for to need saving. You couldn't have cops if you didn't need them. And some personalities, I'm sure you have met, that's just what they need to be. They need to be that savior person. And so even if it's like EMS or, or the development of medical science, we wouldn't know what human souls look like except for we, somebody got sick and we needed to know. So any concept, you have to have the bad to cause any gain as a society. Otherwise we'd still be living in in castles um just hanging out. I mean you would there would be no reason to no drive. If you knew this was the same thing you were going to do every day and that was what your children were going to do every single day. We've seen this with poverty. You you just you stop caring. You do nothing then. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know that you're going to cause an effect somewhere, a balance or imbalance, whatever, and have you know, I, I take a medicine that can fix my health condition because all these people died of this condition. And now I can get a $4 prescription that supposedly fixes me. But thousands of people had to die. So who's to say, you know, maybe somebody else who takes the medicine grows up to be president someday. Who's to say that those thousands of people were wasted lives? So this, this is the fun of the free will arguments anyway, is because... You can say, I'm here because, well, because I'm supposed to be here. And that's that's just the end of the rail for me. This is where I'm at. And the rail, even though I can't see it, that's the way it's going to proceed forward. Or you can take the tact of, I'm here because God told me to be here. Um, I could have chose to be over there instead of them. There's plenty of choices on it. And there's no winning argument for it either. <laughs> I do have some... some I do have things I can pull out to support it, like for instance, some quantum mechanics. Um, but you said there's no winning. My God's right, and we just go with that. It's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I suppose to say, 
everybody wins because everybody is a choose choose or, right. So what? I say, in that case, everybody wins because everybody's higher power is right. Yeah, and it's whatever like, you believe. Anybody can believe anything they want to, and that's right. And I don't, you know, here's the thing. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't believe that personally, you know. But I mean, that's that's the, that's the sum of it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just gonna put your foot down and say mine's right and yours wrong, well, anybody can do that. Yeah. Well, that's how a lot of people debate, though. How many Facebook debates have you seen that are, I'm right, you're wrong? How many wars have been started? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It's not a new phenomenon. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Not, it's no, not just because it's hot, there's the no war. water. Yeah, they, the, 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 the wars are actually the direct result of not being able to, to, come to, the table. to come to the table or come to any kind of agreement or to prove your point, you know, through your big words. Yeah. Your big boy words. Well, yeah. even small words. I understand you, and you can be different. That sentence alone could have solved like 98% of the world conflict. Well, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna debate that, and this is gonna be so completely off topic now. But I'm gonna debate that with, with one. What's it yeah, you remember? We, That's the rails. You erased. <laughs> I have removed the topic from the board. You're right. Um, <laughs> what a fool I am. <laughs> but you know what? Most wars aren't fought, fought over disagreeing with each other. Skirmishes are fought over disagreeing with each other. Fisticuffs caught, are fought over disagreeing with each other, which, by the way, I'm kind of happy of actually getting to use fisticuffs in the situation. Um, wars are not. Wars are fought over, I understand you, I understand your people, but you have something I want, and I'm going to take it. That's what most wars are over. But define wants. What is the thing that they want? Be it gold, because it's usually it's not it's not gold, oil, people, power, territory, resources, food. But water, how is that how access. is that different than you're different and that's okay? Yeah, well, you're different is more towards you personally are different and we're fine with how mm -hmm. you are, but I still want that pretty gold mine underneath you. So that takes away the okay part. Well, yeah. Second half of that sentence. Well, I mean, sure, it takes away. I mean, it, it, you, you could still be okay, but I mean, if you're not a moral person, you, you could have no problem with the person you're removing, personally, for the gold. It's like you're you're okay, but go over there and give me your gold. Just because you say they're you're not okay, okay because doesn't they're mean not, doesn't because mean where they're, they're existing then is not okay, and therefore that person is not okay as a whole. I'm I'm trying to be that simple. I'm not. I I really am because sometimes the four year olds have the right answers. Because they don't know how dumb grown-ups are. Grown-ups are complicated and stupid. Yes. I'll agree with that. And, and particularly what comes to mind, because I listen to the news, um, the situation in Iraq right now, the guys with the bigger guns say, you can't dress like this, act this way, or whatever. And even though you're Muslim, you're not the right kind of Muslim. Mm -hmm. So you just need to be eradicated. Not even like... You need to live over here. No, you need to be eradicated. Right. So. I was being nice. Yeah, but I'm just. But they don't even want the land. They just. You are not okay. And it's that simple to that's, them. That's what I said. There's a, there's a multitude of wants. Yeah. And I, I maintain the more often than not. It's, and it's yes, a if, it, if it were, if it was that simple, that would, that would uh, take care of all the problems. Most, the majority of the problems. But the problem is, is the topic we're discussing is not. That simple. It's inherent. Well, I want it to be. I know you want it. And that's okay. I'll play. Did you want any coffee? What? Did you want any coffee? Okay. No, I'm trying to leave myself off. Why? I'm thinking maybe it's, it's exacerbating my headaches. Possibly, yes. Just because he's an electrician, good electricians don't spend their time getting shocked. Just for the record. I don't know how good an electrician. I've never seen him work. He's still here. I was gonna say I don't see that many scars on his hands. 110 volt does not wipe you out. I know this from experience. 220 doesn't wipe you out. Uh, I know this from experience. What so, made the fireball? That depends. Shoot? That depends on how the shock is administered and the average of the shock. Soaking the duration of the shock. The duration Path of the shock through the body. Path of the shock that through is the body. That is, is actually, that, is yes. actually, that is actually the, the most 
mostly. If it goes through your arm in one one hand and out the other, crosses your heart, and anything over 50 volts has the potential to kill you. Yeah, especially if you have uh, breaks in the skin, for instance, and things like that. I actually mm-hmm. do. How many volts are you? Well, the which which time? When you broke your hand. When I broke my hand? Oh, it was 110 volt. It wasn't much. It just I have to be soaking wet at the time. Mm-hmm. And that probably helped it because it probably went around more. You know what? Yeah. Standing in water holding onto a car. Mm-hmm. Ever. <laughs> I bet. I bet it doesn't stop. It Repeatedly because his dad didn't know what the switch was doing. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, what, that's, that's the dangerous part when, when working with electricity. If you're just making up circuits and stuff and you're holding two tiny wires, one hand, one hand holds one, one hand holds the other, it's gonna, it might, might not go through your heart, but there's high probability. Well, most, most people's galvanic skin response is high enough that, or most people's uh, resistance on their skin is high enough. I used to, I worked for Creek Electric for a while, uh, as part of their engineering department. The president could walk up to test whether or not something's live. Yep, it's hot. Mm-hmm. That's how he test 110 volt, because his skin resistance was so high. He could touch both hands and it would not affect him whatsoever. Fortunately, most people, unfortunately, most people don't have that high resistance. We don't use that. We don't do it that way anymore. Oh, well, that's all right. He looked at us and said, don't you do that. And the older guys, they can taste what voltage it is, you know? Yeah, no. No, <laughs> no let's not play that game. Let's not play that game. However, let's get back onto the simulation. Argument. Where we started from. All right. Um, is there anything... Is there anything that precludes the concept of the simulation argu- argument biblically? Or I should just say in, in religion in general. I don't have to narrow down to one. You are not in frame, sir. When you say religion in general, that also leads up in all the doctrines that have nothing to do with scripture. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got a good thing. point on that, yeah. I mean, is there, is there anything that precludes the possibility? Nope, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven. The fact that the doctrine that when we are resurrected, we are being all whole selves, regardless of any absent parts. Um, there's even a concept, I can't remember what doctrine, I'm bad at that, um, that upon your experience in heaven, you will frolic about as a whole person. So if you were an amputee and you end up in heaven, you could walk, even without resurrection. So those are very interesting doctrines, and I can't say they're wrong. I've <laughs> never been. Um, I mean, every day with my cookie is heaven. What's but, that? Um, <laughs> I went to, went to do this thing and point, and hey, God, just... So <laughs> you must like it was a pun, too. Yes, yes, that every day with me is heaven. Yes. Um, but no, there's, there's enough scripture to support the fact that how the party is down here, when the New Jerusalem comes down, will, will be the party. It's I don't see anything that says that you, it is not copy. Gotcha. No, I guess one of the questions comes, if it is. Okay, let's say the, we haven't got it. It's good. Does it matter? No, because we're all puppets. No, because we can't change it <laughs> if we wanted to. And we're still, we're still experiencing it one way or mm-hmm. another. It doesn't matter. The only thing you could do is live your life the best way possible. Pretty much what it boils down to. That's my thought. Anyways. Well, and then there's those who go will forever try to change it. Dr. Frankenstein, that was his entire point, was to play God to create something that supposedly no other human could create. Right. And that that piece of fiction was very, very interesting, very disturbing. Um, fantastic. Fantastic does not mean she wasn't completely nutters. Um, yeah, think about that. Look at my niece Carson and, and say, that child can write Dr. Frankenstein. It goes a little bit deceptive. I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, most writers are all nuts anyway. I know, but Mary Shelley was 13. She didn't... Yeah, just saying. <laughs> anyway. Padded room, that's different than just a little crazy. 
Um, but so Dr. Frankenstein had tried to create the same thing, and it did not go well. So what happens when you do try to get off the grid? Ooh, what if you can succeed? Hmm? What if you can succeed? What if he hasn't used a criminal's brain? Mm -hmm. Well, and even like, even even in the movie The Matrix, forgive me, it's been years since I've watched it, but so they got off the grid, and they still had to live underground. They didn't have any more freedom. They just weren't in a pod. They were aware, but they they still had to hide. So were they really better off? Well, the Matrix was also... Matrix, by the way, was one of those great examples of free will versus uh, uh, right on rails arguments, because when, yeah. when you get to the end, you're just like, oh, wait. They've been this doing... This is, time. this is all been on rails the whole time. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. How interesting. So, but at the very end, it was different. So... You'd eventually come to a different outcome. Yeah. And we've done this before. Maybe there was a, a permutation where we got the, the letters right out there on the web. <laughs> the letters are still backwards. Yes. <laughs> You're just looking at me like it wasn't funny, and it was hilarious. It, it, Remember, folks, read it, it this way. I did um, not find it amusing. Just hold it up to a mirror. Reading it backwards does not fix it, because it's mirror writing. Yeah. Okay. So the letters would still be backwards, just in the correct order. It would be, you know, irrelevant to me either way. I could watch it. It's one of those for that weird. Um, okay. Yes. Careful yeah. attention. You can read it. And, and it was only you two. I don't know you can read it without careful attention, and that's why I hate it. Is that if it's a simulation, somebody would try to take advantage of it? Yes, why not? If you can control the puppet strings. I believe that's what Hitler's plan was. Yeah, that's true to a certain degree. That's that is a, but, but what Hitler was doing was regardless of whether it was a simulation or non simulation, regardless But he was still gonna control the puppet strings. That was his 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 and keep in mind the almost all of the royal houses in Europe, bases based starting with Charlemagne, were king by the grace of God. They were divine, put in and even I'm um, really bad with names and logic, but the guy <coughs> in Japan, he was divinely chosen. The emperor was divinely chosen. Well, all kings used to declaim, declare declare divine right or, or trace their ancestors to gods or whatever. I mean, it's right. not well, let's, let's, so, let's face it. If you could beat the other guy who was previously king, obviously I'm king of God now, or I am divinely... Because it used to be, that was... Think about it. Is that it used to be they were living gods. Unless, unless I was that powerful. And then I think for instance a lot of the Egyptian pantheon, most of them were not most of them were living gods that after they passed somebody else became the embodiment of or right. well, it was the same thing with the, the Japanese emperor for a very long time. Yeah. As you end up with a nine year old and the, even the Dalai Lama as a holy person, not even a ruler. Um, is is the divine one? Yeah, reincarnated, um, reincarnated, reincarnated. Yeah. Um, and the uh, something sparked my mind. So, know? so yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's they they were there was very much a divine um, thing for everybody who was elected or everybody who was ascended to the position of king one way or another. It was because uh, nobody said, "Hey, I did this on my own." Um, they wouldn't want to go if you say if somebody else yeah. did it. Because, yeah, even even like you said, with, with like the power of Zeus or whatever, you, you were, you were the, the thing. So they've always tried to hack the system, if not game it. Well, and so um, that's, and that's, and my debate on that is, again, those are those are things that are irrelevant of whether or not it's a simulation. Those are, those are completely irrelevant. Because if it's real or it's not real, Hacking the system or gaming the system would be stuff that you would try to do, and I don't have I don't have an answer for what it would be. The Magic. best I can come up with is an Amber Drive. So Magic what? or science? Magic would be a great Learning example of that. And using them to your advantage. Yeah. Things that are variables within the system that must be, must be in a simulation for it to occur versus things that can just happen regardless of the simulation status. 
control of human beings at the level of uh, um, Hitler irrelevant of, of whether or not you're in a simulation or not. I mean, unless unless somebody's got a good reason why it was ha could only happen in a simulation. I don't can't think of anything for him or one of those guys. In fact, I can't really think of anything. That... Well, it depends on how you feel about outsider's perspective. you got the one guy who's trying to pull them the strings. How many years until somebody tried to stop him from pulling the puppet strings? <clears throat> well, it didn't actually take that long. Ten years? Well, it's not time. Very but I'm just saying, it wasn't like, oh, he's doing something wrong. Oh, he built camps. We should eradicate him. Like, no, not my problem. Not my people, not my problem. Um, so, however you define hacking or gaming can alter that. You put it in your pocket. Um, can alter how you... If all the robots are doing the same thing, the simulation, you're doing this, you're running, riding the rails, you're doing this, and then Bob jumps off. And everybody else doesn't even care that Bob jumped off until all of a sudden they go to, to hit that keystroke and Bob's not there. That's when they started caring. So if you look at it that it didn't make any difference until it's actually we just tried to do something and then we couldn't, Because one can say that was the entirety of Americans' involvement in World War II was it had nothing. They had something we wanted, and they were no longer acting right, so we used it as an excuse because they were able to do all this other stuff before we started to care. And war is horrible. I'm not saying we should jump in and every time somebody decides to act wrong, but I would say that World War II would have been an uh, exception to the want for America. I mean, there, we definitely we definitely came out better in the end, but we had to be provoked into even getting involved. Right, but there was wanting what? Some could, some could argue to be retribution, some could argue that they wanted to be the superpower, making the world free for democracy, whether you want it or not. Um, so, I mean, want for what? Want for, we have an opportunity to spend money to get us out of the depression so if we enter a war we'll be mis getting things back and the economy flowing again because we'll give all these people jobs in the army somehow so well by, by, by whatever it is um, so the manufacturing and you know the whole the whole thing so define the wants yes it was good and right to go save people who apparently could not save themselves, but nonetheless, um, at what point in time was it worth whisking our skin for? We're just going to sit here and keep rowing the boat, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we couldn't row anymore because Bob was missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. At this point, it was Hiroshima. But... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow not the definition. That's for Harvard. My brain's dead. There's no copy in it. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's coffee right there. So, um, no, actually, it's horrible tasting, but it's coffee. All coffee tastes like burnt boiled dog. Burnt boiled dog? Yeah. That's a fantastic description of that. I'm keeping that. Um, but it was, drinks it anyway. But it does its job very well. They're going to make you cry. <laughs> she, he of course, being taste, coffee. But he drinks it. And he tries to get me to drink it. I hate the taste, and I don't drink it. It but I let everybody else drink it. Delicious. <laughs> Matter of my tongue is more highly evolved. I hate pickles. <laughs> different Sorry. people have different tastes. I know. I don't have to understand them. And that's I okay. I, she thinks I'm <laughs> not human anyway because I don't like coffee and I don't like chocolate. He doesn't like ice cream either. No, no. We're leaving. You, you, you're wrong on the last one. I like ice cream. I just can't eat ice cream anymore. So, there's a difference. Anyways, I'm going to further narrow <laughs> definitions now because I, I, I realize who I am and what I do and have done for a living. Hacking is doing what you should be unable to do. So, I'm going to narrow the definition a little bit. You're in sort of magic and things like that. You said magic and you said a couple of things. I 
Well, and science too. I mean, any time you try to learn the rules and then use them any way you can. I mean, there's stuff like we don't know why the what it is it the um ah, the placebo effect. The, we don't know why sometimes when people take sugar pills and they think it'll work, it cures them. Yes, something the human body does, and we don't know why. And I would actually fall that into gaming the system. Gaming the system is where you start learning the rules and take, taking advantage of them okay. and, and putting it in gamer terms. So if, if placebo effect, if you figured out how the placebo effect worked and used this more of a gaming the system thing, um, hacking the system is what can you do to break it or take advantage of it in a way that you're supposed to be unable. So that's Take advantage or take control, yes. Or control even, yes. Have fun with that one, because um, if you have, if you do have sentient being or beings beyond that, if you're trying to take control of it, you would assume that they would cover control and just delete you or what have you, or you are no more. We were discussing this last night that they had to eat the heart of their warrior, their, their foe to gain their power to control what we just that person is no longer there and I must eat their heart to make sure that they're really not there anymore. So that would be taking Huh? Oh that was the Aztecs, wasn't it? I got nothing. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, don't talk to an anthropologist after two AM. You start getting Yes, yeah, so anthropology discussions at two AM will leave you you with vague notions of cool stuff that you have no idea how to Yeah, something about an onyx heart. sword and eating the heart. I got nothing else. Um, but that would be that would be hacking to take control. You have the power of God A, I have the power of God B, I'm going to beat you, and then I'm going to take that. Interesting enough. Yeah. We can't prove so that more, it worked or didn't more, work. More of a Highlander sort of approach. <laughs> yeah, but who, who's to say? How do we know that God right now is not out there either having a fight with fisticuffs or having tea with Buddha? We don't know. I would more expect tea. But that's right. Well, I mean, but how do we know? I presume that. Which which brings which brings one of the, the final questions that was on my list anyways. So let's say, let's say again, we're in the simulation or hypothesis concept. Or... Now, I keep using simulation hypothesis. That is a specific one. There's actually a number of other ones that don't work. Simulation hypothesis, our ancestors, or I mean, our, 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 the real world people have run a simulation of us to get to better understand their ancestors and how their ancestors come to be where they're at. But there's a number of other ones ranging from matrix arguments, uh, simus, I've lost the word suddenly. Then boil down to the idea they don't necessarily have to, have to be so specific. So even though I keep using this one, there's a lot of less specific ones. So if this is the case, you know, most games and most simulations are teams of people that have created it. Is there anything that precludes that? Is there anything that says that it is that could possibly be the case in the Bible, or anything that precludes it in the Bible? In Genesis, God is used in the plural. Elohim. Make sure I can stick with that one. Just Elohim? Yeah. It's still debated whether it's plurality by some people. So I know this well, is But it's one of those things. It is. We say, even in English, we say a couple. We don't say two of a couple. We yes. say a couple. It is, it is, there's, there's an attachment there. So particularly those of us who are followers of Messiah, we see the three facets, the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son. I dislike the word Trinity, but, um, because, yeah. But, um, so... But in the Hebrew, it's always Elohim. Up, clear up until Moses, I think, when when Moses is, it's Elohim. 
he refers to the, the the most high God is referred to in the plural, which so like you are a couple, but then you are two separate people at the same time. So um, the Hebrew word is echad. Um, you need plurality was the definition that I got out of some book. Or or you can call it a plurality of one. The other one. Do you think plurality is the best is the best description for it, the textbook description for it? So just so you're saying you're saying yes, it does say that there's more than one creator. I, there... no, I personally believe it is a multifaceted because if you go through it's there's many names of the creator. The the, the, the God who sees is one of the ones that's first mentioned that comes to mind. Um, and that was by a non-believer. That was by Hagar, the Egyptian slave, um, the God who sees. And then that's like the branch off point, pick which son to, to go for, for Islam. Um, so the God who sees is recognized by both parties. It's just which son got the cookies. Um, and um, I had an entire calendar with him, so I know there's at least 12. Um, the names of God, just oh, okay. just you know, the the kings of kings, the, the 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 God Almighty. I mean, the, the list goes on. I mean, you see it all the time in Scripture, and they're not just being poetic. They, I think, I think they really do mean something. Um, so I would not say in the plurality so much as the multifaceted. Like I have a diamond on my engagement ring with many shiny parts. That does not mean that the shiny parts they can't exist without the diamond. But then. They are make the diamond hole. So, okay. Interesting. Anybody else got anything to add on it? Sorry. Because, <laughs> yes, actually, uh, depending on who you talk to, biblically, it's either Trinity or duality. Because they're uh, uh, part of the Jewish branches are strictly that it's a duality. And they're part of the Jewish branches who. The spirit of God is like an extension rather than a separate. It is not even considered a facet. It is, um, I'm trying to think. I can leave my cup here and I can leave, but it's still Cat's cup. Mm -hmm. So there's some of the branches of Judaism who recognize that yes, this might be God's spirit and God's over here, but that doesn't mean that's the same thing. Right, because it would be it would be the breath of God went over, um, uh, over the land. The so breath of God did these things. Does not mean uh, that they're the same. They're the same thing. So even they go completely monotheistic. Yes. That there is only the one old white guy with the beard and the stick. Um, no, no, no. White bearded guy. Was he bearded? With those people, yes. Those the ones I talked to. There's nothing that, says, nothing that says that he's male. There's nothing that says that he stands upright on two feet. There's nothing that says that he spoke. Um, there's mm, hints that he spoke Hebrew, but there's not even how do you, he might have spoke gibberish. I mean, you know, it's the creator to be um, irrelevant, I mean, yeah. really, in a lot of ways. It'll just go straight to your head. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but why would you write in one language versus another? I mean, there, there's huge debates on this. Um, and so, oh, and don't forget how to pronounce it and how to spell it. Come to opportunities, too. So there's this thing. So when you... Who's to say? The scripture always refers to Elohim in the beginning. And then it breaks out into different words for him over time. Sure. Which, interestingly enough, Genesis is like kindergarten, and then by the time you get up to Deuteronomy, you need a lot of big words. So, <laughs> yes, which goes into either A, understanding, B, different authors, different human authors, or C, um, finding words to describe what you're explaining. Or, so. or when you're when you're explaining things and you're more in tune with other people, you don't have to use as many of the words. But the the harder it is for you to understand their position, the more words you need to get them from point A to point B. Possible. 
So it's mm. kind of funny because over time the words get more and more complicated that people seem to understand less in common. They have to be nudged more to get yeah, I, I can see alignment. Because just in, just in the five books, they're, it starts out very simple. The dome is over the sky, and then there's water, and then there's land, and then there's fish and birds and land and animals. Pretty simple. Um, it's not. It, it, it's really just not written any more complicated than that. Then and, and then there's, there's a, two orbs of light, day and night. That's pretty simple. But then by the time you get into even the end of Genesis, when you get into um, describing things with Jacob and Joseph, and you have other cultures you're dealing with because of the Egyptians and stuff. Like it gets kind of wordy that you have to say it like this. And it was like, no, I, I, yes, I am my father's son, and yes, I am my mother's son, and then you move on. By the time you get to, on into Leviticus, when they start describing who your family is, it's not just your sister. It's your sister by your father or your sister by your mother, mm -hmm. being very specific to denote your family relations. Um, Love, I mean, for something that we think is so simple that, of course, she's either my sister or she's not. I mean, we think of it as a yes or no question, even with mixed families and everything else. But we only have one word for sister. Right. And they, they didn't, they didn't um, as far as I understand, the Hebrew, they, there was just the one. But they didn't, there wouldn't have been necessarily a step, but there would have been half. But some, it didn't make any difference. So, but they went to the point that, no, in our culture, we recognize you're a sister, whether you're by father or by mother. In other cultures, um then that may or may not be your sister, depending on which parent it's from. But if they dealt with other cultures, they would have the ideas in their head. Right, which like I said, so as you get as you get on into Leviticus, either, when they start talking about these rules and what you can and cannot do, they're overly specific, mm -hmm. even though they're using the same word all the time, but they're defining it very specifically. So you're right, as, as you encounter other Legalistic. cultures. Like it's more legalistic, where you have to have this or that scenario spelled out. In, in I use the word specific rather. Okay. Um, because the legalistic, I, I see the big hammer. Um, it's because it does not. What what I'm thinking of specifically, like who you can and cannot marry. You cannot marry your sister, your sister by your father, or your sister by your mother. Right. They don't have the half sister concept. Whereas in Egyptian culture, they did. You may or may not count as being a sibling, depending on from which parent. So it wasn't legalistic, as, as in you could, or the punishment or the wrath. It was just, this is how we're defining it. Um, when you read it, it seems like you're repeating yourself over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but it's specific versus, because they only took out the one word for sister, because they didn't understand that you could have something that looks like but does not really your sister <laughs> whereas in other cultures they they, they recognize the half because if you went off patriarchal I can't remember comedians I'm bad with the, the, the culture names one of them it, if it was your mother's children they were not necessarily your siblings yeah because so you could lines. yeah so you could marry them and um, but for Judaism no you don't cross marry if you, Cousins, but not siblings. So, uh, it's time to wrap it up. It is time. It is time. In fact, actually, it's just a little bit. Oh, there's nobody coming in today, so we're not going to have like bears looking in the windows or anything. Um, anyways, um, thank you all for coming, and we will see you next week. Hopefully, we'll see you guys next week too. So.